Maya should be. I've got a special guest there. Good friend of mine, Mike GLC, man. You know, we're talking about real life. And, you know, this whole me and my piano thing, as you know, I've been sharing bits and pieces of myself, but I really feel honored to have Mike, Mike GLC on there today. He's been a big part of my journey and a big part of, of, of just the happening, which is what we're talking about. This is about transition. Um, it's about being the change you want to see. Yeah, so we're going to get straight into it. Mike, man, I'm really, really grateful to have you on the show, bro. And give thanks, firstly, to the most, you know what I mean? The most highest. And um, just like, yeah, like, you know, for anyone that doesn't know, Mike GLC has been an innovator for what's happening out here musically. Because music-wise, he's, he's been independent for a long time. And underground, he's pushed to underground, sending CDs on the streets, hundreds of thousands. Um, I've been there. I've seen it, I've done it with you, you know what I mean? You know, we bucked in that way. I was out there with my vision and our visions met and he's been a part of my life ever since and he's a good friend of mine. So it's an honor to have you on the station, bro, to have you on the show, sorry. And um, just, being, just, just, just being real, I want, I want you to express like I'm really inspired by your comic, what you're doing, what you stand for, who you are, in the way that I know you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I see you as a person that is being the change that you want to see. And I feel like it's important for the younger generation to see and to know and to understand what's the motivation, what's behind that. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, I think it takes courage. Um, for some of us, it's normal, but I, I just think it takes courage to be the change you want to see, to do things like, for those that don't know, Mike GLC has got a comic out and he's illustrating more work that I'm looking at and I'm in awe. And I'm just looking at it and going, wow, like, you know, it's a part of you that nobody really knows. And like, I feel like, you know, as a creative being, which is what you are, uh, what's your motivation? What's your inspiration? And, you know, what's behind, who's, who, who's, what's, what's behind the man? It's, it's, it's like what you said, being a change that you want to be in. Mm. So, you know, we will say we're real. Mm. So if you're real, mm. if you really want to experience a life, you really want to see certain things or imagine certain things or, you know, no matter what you do in life, do you really want to do it? Mm. <clears throat> For me, that's what inspires the change. And that's what makes the transition. Mm. It's a necessity. If you're coming from where we're coming from, if you've been in situations that we've been in, mm. then you know no matter what turn or t twist you take, it better be a real one. And you better try to do it for real. Mm. So with the comic and with the artwork and the, you know. From music to that, yeah. It was... <sighs> I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's a story, there's the 50 cent story, and then there's, there's also the transition. Mm. You know, the 50 cent story is you go prison enough, you go care homes, you end up on the run, and some way you find That's time. your story, you right? This, that's the story which gets you behind, which, you know, which, that's not the backdrop to getting into the art or staying mm. in the art. Mm. Having talents is one thing, like having talents and being, having the ability, whether it's art, whether it's music, whether it's sport, whether it's applying yourself to something, mm -hmm. applying yourself to something is a talent in itself. So life has to provide the backdrop. Of course. For, for you to find a ledge. Yeah, just have been, it's been in situations where you're going to be given time to find something to do. Mm. And whenever I'd go to jail, I'd always do art. If I were, if I was, you know, I had a situation once where we I ended up leaving London <clears throat> because I just knew that something was going to happen, and mm. if that happened, I didn't want to be around at the time. So I ended up leaving London and buying all my equipment and living up in Notts. Bought a house up in Notts, and I bought all this art equipment. And I knew I had to reteach myself everything. Mm. <clears throat> I knew I'd always like that unlearning kind of vibe. I remember. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, having having a talent is one thing. Because for me, basically, talent for me comes from necessity and mm. failure. I just refuse to do something shit. Like, mm. I don't want to do it. Rubbish, I'm going to do it. So I just knew that if I'm going to do this, it's going to be a long journey to learn, to get to the level where it's actually going to be real. Mm. Drawing one picture over the space of two days is no good. If I want to be a comic artist, I need to be able to produce a comic in a month. Kind of and I think that's important because I feel like <coughs> I feel like I had a studio for 12 years, as you know. I feel like a lot of people, when it comes to art, it's like, how did we get from a point where we look at someone and we go, rah, these people spent like, I don't know, maybe their whole life just painting one picture. Yeah, yeah, we I mean, look at it and we go, that's amazing. But yet, 
I used to have shoot, like kids come in the studio all the time. Like just used to want to come in and be like, they wanted to make an album in a day. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's not the process. <coughs> it's not the way it works. You there's, know? A, there's, a, there's a, yeah. You see, you have to learn. You have to reteach yourself. Basically, you have to kind of, I had to reteach myself all the shit that I didn't do in college. Hmm. All the shit that I didn't do in uni. All the shit that I should have went and learned. You know, it's, it's, it's such a, it's, a, it's mm-hmm. you realise where they beat us and where, where, where they shouldn't beat us. Mm. You realise why there's so much talent comes from places like Japan and like the, 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 the mix of talent, education, as well as Discipline. natural, natural flair as well. Yeah. Does that make sense? So like, you know, us as black people, we, 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 we get beaten in the technicals. Mm. Do you know where I'm coming from? I didn't want that to be the case. Like mm. I wanted to go and learn my thing, so I could finish the. I knew I knew that. So how much time would you say you've been putting in <coughs> for, for the comic, like to, just to, to be able to illustrate the art in the way that you do? What's it taking? I, do, you? I, I, I work every day. Mm. I wait, over I, over year span, you say like what? Like I couldn't even put it. I mean, you'd have to do the maths. If I spend what do I do in the mornings, I work from like seven. I do artwork from seven to eleven. Mm. A break. I got a member of staff that come that, that I got a phone and kind of see what's going on for the day. I do that for a couple of hours. I train for an hour. I eat and then I go back to doing something separate that mm. would be creative, whether it be mm. writing or more artwork in the afternoon. Yeah. And then I usually hop off and play some football and then reset. So like, I'd have to get those hours and then multiply that by ten years to work out what it is. <coughs> Yeah. And you know what's interesting that, like, you know, what I want to touch on as well, just, you know, we're not going to get into it too much. I, you've got a piece that you're going to share. And, you know, obviously it's me and my piano. Um, obviously we're going to share a piece of music, man. But that's, 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 that's just a beautiful thing. But I think it's important for people to kind of understand when you're, when you're doing something, what's compelling you to do it. Like when you're, the level of discipline it takes to, to be the change you want to see. Because a lot of people know Mike GOC, they know Mike GOC, or I should, they know me, and they know me a certain way. And when I made that shift, you know, it, it, that it, was, it was an interesting thing, because I had people saying to me, oh, you know, yeah, because I love that, but I want to hear the old stuff. And I'm like, no, nah, but I feel like what you're doing, for example, like when you talk to me about the backstories of the comic, you talk to me about what's inspired it, I'm like, wow, this is a needed thing. This is something that the youth need to understand. Plus, another thing I want to talk about is that everybody gets given their story. Everybody gets given their journey, yeah? So you got given your journey to be able to give it to other people, like myself, you know what I mean? And I think that's important because it's profound, you know? Like, you're, you're, think, you're coded, isn't it? You're fingerprinted. And I know that as another person. So <coughs> I'm another creative, like, to another creative. And you're my brother. So that's, that's what it is. And at the end of the day, um, yeah, just, just sort of, I think it's, if you don't know, like I said, go and check out what he's doing, man. It's, it's really, really important. But I think more importantly, we get given these stories. We're coming from certain places and, and, and a, lot of, a lot of the younger generation are out there with this sort of uh, disillusioned understanding that this is what I want to be an artist. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to be this. But what you really want to be, what you're saying is you want to be yourself and you want to serve. You want to serve. You want to do something greater than just yourself. Do you, do you know <laughs> And also, where I don't know, I don't know if I can say this to, the, to, 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 to I don't know, a younger generation or youth, how much fucking fun do you want to have before you die? That's true. Because we're true. creating an environment which isn't fun, bro. Mm. It's not fun. And that was one of, that was one of my driving things as well. Mm. Is that, <clears throat> you know, we're not getting younger. You're a big kid, though. And <laughs> Inside, didn't it? Like, yeah. And we, 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 so it's like, I look at if you really like if you're if we're really from what we're from, right? mm. we've, re- we've experienced all the emotions we've experienced fear, mm. pain, love, all, the, all, the, all these emotions, anger, rage, all the, constantly defending ourselves and going through this life where you know I woke up today and think, right, no one fucking loves me. Mm. <laughs> like, mm. Sometimes these are our realities, mm. absolutely. Like, right, was last time, you know, absolutely. So, like, mm. you, um, <clears throat> but then you, you know. That's, that's your your conception of what you believe love to be. They probably do, but mm. it's what you you know. Sometimes you wake up and like, what, what happened to my family? Mm. What happened to my? So anyway, it's like you want to have some fun before you go, don't you? So don't you want to do things if you've got an opportunity mm-hmm. to go and walk a whole different way of life, to go and experience a whole different set of people, 
to go and fascinate and be fascinated by a whole different array of things. And all you've got to do to get that is actually apply yourself mm. for a concentrated amount of time. Mm. Why not? Because that time's going to go away. Mm. See, and that's what leads me back to it being a necessity and being real. Like, if it's, if it's, again, these are things we're going to deal with more as we go down the line. Mm. It's like even our concept of being outside and even our concept of making money. Mm. Like, if you're really about what you like, I've, I've sat in a prison cell once and had a conversation with a man. A man said to me, <coughs> we had a dispute over a phone and this was actually the same man who actually ended up giving, I ended up giving pictures to. And he was going well, like artwork pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he said, listen to the answer yourself. I clicked on pictures and it was cool. But like, even once he said to me, like, mate, why are you always haggling for this? I owed him 150 quid for his phone. So I kept trying to haggle him to 100 quid. He's like, why are you always haggling for this 100 quid? Um, I said, bro, I ain't got money for that. He said, but you got money though. Mm. I said, bro, if I ain't got enough money to be able to sit down and plan my next two years mm. and not have to chase a penny, I ain't got no money, bro. Because mm. money's for planning at this point. Mm. That's it. So my, I say that to say like, so even when I see, even when I see man that are, are perpetuating that, that image of making money, I'm telling you, all right, cool. So you're supposed to be on what I'm on then. <clears throat> because you're a grown man outside getting money. Mm. Now, if you're, from, if you're on what I'm on, we get money so we can do what's next. Mm. That's the only reason. Mm. So everything's a necessity for what's next mm. in life. And what do you want to live next? I definitely don't want to be around this. Mm. No more. Again, how real is it to you? Mm. How real is this? The illusion versus the rea reality. Like, how real is it? I tell you what's real. As an artist, as a creative, like obviously you know that I put a few albums out back in the day. A lot of it went unnoticed, um, but it was for who it was for. And one of the biggest things for me were a young girl coming up to me, to me sort of bartering with her, like, buy the album, five pound, you know, buy the album, buy the album. And she bought the album, she bought the album and she called back and she was like, you know what? There's a song in there called The Mummy Song. Remember that, right? And she said to me, you know what? That song changed my life. Remember we used to have a little system where they could call and give feedback way before everyone was doing it. <laughs> yeah, like, like, system, right? yeah. yeah. They, they got the numbers sometimes. Yeah, so <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a thing. Can get the numbers, yeah. It's a thing like, no, but honestly, that genuinely... Was she an attractive girl that phoned you back with a... No, nah, you know what? Numbers, honestly, it? don't try to draw <laughs> me out, bro. Don't try it. Like, yeah? But she, she no, it, it was the fact that she was, she was she, she was sincere. She was like, rah, you know what? She was feeling suicidal. But that song happened no, to but just we, but we was motivate like that. her. And that, that was the strength you know of what, what I mean? we was doing. But, and we were saying this a minute ago, that was the strength from what we were doing. And mm. even that period of time in my life when we were doing the CDs, mm. I always knew, like, like I said, like we said before, the generation of mine, I can't complain. I don't do music full time. I think mm. I write, I don't write music, I write, I write raps. A rap will come, she'll tell you, bro. A rap mm. will come to me when, when I'm getting ready to go to my life, I sit there, mm. I drink my drink, a bar will come to me, I'll have a bar. All mm. of those bars have been the last three stars that everyone's got for the last five years. Mm. So to even be able to just muster up a bar out of my head that people give a mm. fuck about and can come back around. I had one time I did that. I had a bar, I, just, ugh, I sat outside the gym, just mumbled a bar to them and come back. I remember that winning the hardest bars number one. Now I'm not going to get half a million views off my bars. I'm going to get 100,000 or whatever, a couple hundred mm. thousand. Like for someone who doesn't, and of my generation, I can't complain. Again, it's from a space of creativity. <coughs> Just creativity. Mm. So I kind of learned a long time ago to just fall back on creativity mm. and then administrate it when you saw it out. That's the thing. It's like evolution, isn't it? It's like, furthermore, I want to hear a little bar. I'm going to play a little sign <laughs> in a minute. Mike's going to share something, which is great. And, um, you know, just, yeah, we'll just wrap it up, man, nice and short. Like, I'm touching base with my brother. This is someone that, as I said, has helped pioneer a lot of what's happening out here on the underground, which became the mainstream. And also just been a part of my journey, which is which is why we're we're having a chat, man. Me and my piano. Um, you know, I wanna hear I wanna I'd love to hear something, Mike, man. I'm gonna play a little something, you know. Yeah, before we um before we wrap it up. So yeah. Mike G O C Tears are reinstalling her with faith. But nine to more is back to the sources in the plates. The quarters in the apes, the water in the base. The counts, the cutting, the transporting, and the pays. And what takes up a couple of lines, bro, we're tricking into days. We say that we do this to keep us.
sons and our daughters and we're safe But how much of our family get round to being our means The cycles forever turning, though it very rarely change If Ian and Lighting by 30, it very rarely wakes